If you've done any Chinese cooking, you've probably heard of Shaoxing wine. So let's just get something out of the way at first. This is a bottle of proper Shaoxing wine that we picked up in Shaoxing, which is a small city in the Zhejiang province outside of Hangzhou. It's basically the Chinese equivalent of Burgundy. Delicious drink, delicious to cook with. This, meanwhile, is Liaojiu, Chinese cooking wine. For the most part, if you've been buying stuff labeled Shaoxing wine in English in the West, this is what you're actually buying. While it is roughly based off of actual Shaoxing wine, it's salted, spiced, and while usually totally fine to cook with, is decidedly not for drinking. So in our recipe videos, I know that we should probably just call Liaojiu Shaoxing because that's what everyone else seems to do in English, but we stubbornly make the distinction because Shaoxing is a city that's proud of its alcohol. The culture there runs deep. Wandering around the city, you'll find that going out to eat there's often as conjoined with wine drinking as something like Spanish tapas might be. The city is the epicenter of the rice wine that bears its name. It's a much beloved drink there, and you can trace its popularity all the way back to the Song Dynasty. So then what is Shaoxing wine? Shaoxing wine is a subcategory of Huangzhou rice wine. Compared to clear rice wines like Chinese Mijiu or Japanese sake, Huangzhou is generally a bit sweeter and made using a mix of wheat and barley koji rather than purely rice koji. Shaoxing wine, meanwhile, can really refer to four different types of Huangzhou that all originated from that area. The first sort is Yuan Huangzhou, which is dry, generally the cheapest, most basic form of Shaoxing wine. Second is Jiafanzhou, semi-dry, which uses Yuan Hongzhou as part of its base, adds more rice, and has a slightly higher sugar content. The third kind is Xiangniangzhou, semi-sweet, which uses aged Jiafanzhou as a base. And finally, Xiangshuizhou, which is the sweetest of the four. While these last two are sometimes called for in old-school imperial cuisine, what really interests us as cooks is a second one, Jiafanzhou. This specific kind of wine became popular to cook with and drink with in Zhejiang cuisine. In a restaurant in Shaoxing, it's generally this Jiafanzhou that they've got on the table and next to their wok for cooking. Now, just like how Parma became known for ham and San Marzano for tomatoes, chefs tend to seek out the places that make the best stuff. The whole region around Hangzhou was historically renowned for rice production, and Shaoxing's position along the Old Grain Canal allowed this specific rice wine, the Jiafanzhou, to spread, culminating in the old saying, Yuezhou xing tian xia, Shaoxing wine reaches everywhere under heaven. Expensive aged varieties would get packed in specific jars for shipping and called hua diao, the name referring to these artful engravings on the jugs. Nowadays, though, basically any kind of Shaoxing style Jiafanzhou is referred to in China as hua diao and abroad as Shaoxing. Among cooking wines in China, it's generally the nicer sort and what we've grown to usually use. Liaozhou, meanwhile, ferments Huangzhou for only 20 days or so, then adds ethanol and, of course, a whole bunch of salt. And while that might sound damning, it honestly usually works just fine, and, you know, you can't argue with the price. But regardless of which wine you choose, why do they seem to be used so often? So right, use number one, balancing funk. See, there's three categories of unpleasant odors in Chinese cooking. Shanwei, which is sort of like gaminess, xingwei, or fishiness, and salwei, which is the poultry equivalent. Unlike in English, though, where gamey is thought of as kind of a binary thing, Shan Wei can encompass things that are very Shan like mutton to things that are a little Shan like pork. Ditto with the other flavors, fish that have been caught and killed via suffocation can get pretty fishy. But in China, an egg is also sometimes conceptualized as a little fishy. So Chinese cooking is often a game of counteracting and balancing those flavors. And for whatever reason, this kind of wine seems to do a really good job with funk in general. Ever wonder how some people can actually enjoy straight up unfried stinky tofu? try chasing that stinky tofu with a good Shaoxing wine. I don't know why, but the flavors really, really work together. So that's why you'll see Shaoxing wine so much in Chinese marinades. It's less for texture and more for taste. So while any of these Huangzhou rice wines are often preferred, you can swap for a Mijiu rice wine, a Japanese sake, a cheap bourbon, some dry white wine, just use your own judgment. Use number two, for use while stir-frying. See, a huge misconception about stir-frying is that it should all just be max flame all the time. Like in all cuisines, heat control is fundamental in Chinese cooking. And there's three ways to control heat in a wok. First, obviously controlling the strength of the flame itself. Second, controlling the distance the wok is from the flame. And third, by adding more stuff to the wok, which lowers the temperature. So a common move is to take some wine, pour it over a spatula and around the sides of the wok to let it sizzle and basically immediately reduce away. This lowers the temperature, so often we like to swirl it in right after we're done frying the aromatics. 
This wine's used because it adds a nice subtle fragrance, but honestly, any liquid would do the job. Use number three, preserved or drunken dishes. For this use, we generally recommend that you use a nicer sort and skip the liaojiu because the flavor of the wine itself is more fundamental to the dish. A good example is drunken chicken, zuiji, where poached chicken sits in a Shaoxing wine-based brine for at least overnight, but even up to a week. You'll see it too in stuff like Cantonese Lushui Master Stocks, where the alcohol lends a nice flavor but also helps everything keep. So if you're abroad, for these dishes, try to find something that says it's hua diao, though you'll probably need to settle for something salted because of stupid American alcohol laws. So Shaoxing is a great, charming little town, although a little bit on the touristy side. But the food is great, the wine is great. So if you ever find yourself in Shanghai area, definitely check it out. So check out the other link in the description box for a detailed discussion. Or you can check out our Instagram for some travel pictures. And as always, a big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.